to truly understand the heart, soul and fabric of this particular estate, you must first appreciate the history that Siokimau Estate indeed has to offer. For this is an area that was named after a famous Kamba prophetess, Siokimau, who was credited for predicting the early invasion of the white colonialists into the country. The legend goes that Siokimau dreamed and interpreted her dream as a long snake penetrating through this particular country with the snake having its head in Kisumu and its tail in Mombasa. Well, that snake turned out to be the Mombasa-Kisumu railway that was built and completed in the early 1900s. Her premonition prowess made her name and her stature known throughout East Africa. So much so that the prophetess of this particular area in Athi River, prophetess Siongu, named this particular area after Siokimau, and that name has stuck over time. This week on Area Code, we go deeper into this particular estate to find out what really makes Siokimau tick. We talk to the residents and find out more about a particular area that is rich in the legacy and history of this particular country. Welcome to an estate where fact, fiction and myths have been intertwined to create a legacy. The history of Siokimau estate dates as far back as the early 1800s, where one of the most prominent female figures in pre-colonial Kenya was born. Siokimau is said to have helped the Akamba community fight off attacks from the neighboring Maasai who often raided their land for cattle. Siokimau predicted attacks by the Maasai long before they came giving the Kamba people ample time to prepare for defense. The widely acclaimed prophetess among the Kamba community is also hailed for predicting the coming of the white colonialists. The legend goes that Siokimau once said foreigners carrying fire in their pockets, which would later be revealed to be guns, would visit their land. At the Siokimau railway station stands this statue in her honor. But the land which is now known as Siokimau is not where the prophetess buttered her bread. This area was governed by another prophetess called Siongu, who was also impressed by Siokimau's prowess, which led her to name a section of her village after her. After colonialists invaded the country, they turned the land where Siokimau now rests into a ranch because of the semi-arid conditions of the place. Today, Siokimau is a bustling metropolis. Uh, personally, I see it as my high-end settlement. Um, I call it my Mudaiga, my Karen, uh, and I think it has grown over time. And that growth has been characterized by a sprouting commercial hub that earns the county government of Machakos nearly 60% of its total revenue collection. And perhaps therein lies the problem. Because of its commercial viability, zoning rules here are seldom adhered to. In this estate, commercial buildings lay side by side with residential homes. Current Mavoko Member of Parliament, the constituency where Siokimau is located, Patrick Macau, was the former mayor of the now defunct Mavoko Municipal Council. He says initially, majority of Siokimau was under Zone 4, where you see the white subdivided plots, meaning only low density housing and single dwelling premises were allowed. But now things have changed. During my tenure as a mayor, you know, we used to have the, the council bylaws, and um, then it used to be Cap 297, which used to have um, the Planning Act also used to be 266. Now, I don't know whether it's still applied in the, in the, in the, the county governments. Uh, I don't know what NEMA is applying, I don't know what the NCA is applying, but, but, but I tend to think that there used to be more order during the council days, during the local authority days, uh, as opposed to today. The yellow strip you see on this map is Zone Zero, allocated for commercial, institutional and light industry buildings. 
That yellow strip is slowly moving inwards and the residents are a worried lot. The growth of the estate and the subsequent resistance to the changing zoning laws have often led to a series of huge losses from both home and business owners who have witnessed demolition of their property in Siokimau over the past few years. But if the zoning issue may deter you from moving into the estate or even force residents here to relocate, then this woman may give you a reason to stay. Immaculate Nguku Mbugwa has been a resident of Siokimau since 1999. When I first moved here, there were animals, giraffes were walking around, um, these other small uh, antelopes, ostriches, and you could even hear the noise of hyenas down there because there was no other noise. When she moved here, the place wasn't as attractive for home buyers as it is now. Back then, the area had no water or electricity supply. Seeing nothing becoming something. When I first came, there was really nothing. Only my house and another neighbor called Vincent at Jambush, Kulaju, and that's about all. All these people you see here have come since I moved in, in a big, big way. Immaculate is among the most popular residents in Siokimau, and that's not because she was among the first occupants of the area. No, it's because Immaculate constructed the most unique house even I have ever seen. The residence has been built in such a way that the entire house is absolutely round. This is the bedroom. A design that has even and immaculate a well-known local moniker. When I built my house, when I conceived the house I wanted, I decided I would like to, buy, to build an African hut. And African huts were normally round. So I built the house. And to identify me, people say, Ule mama kona nyumba ya round. Ule mama kona nyumba ya round. So eventually they dropped all the history and they just called mama round. So profound has her name become that something else was named after her. This Maram pathway next to her house is now known as Mama Round Road. It's even in the map. It is in a Google, yes. It's a recognized, uh, it's a recognized name, I don't know. I don't know when it became, I just woke up one day and they were calling it Mama Round. Mm, but yes. it must make you feel very proud to be a resident here. I do, I am very proud. I mean, this is my village, this is my Gishagi. I mean, uh, yeah, I belong here. I don't think I'll go anywhere else now. If they allow me, I'll be buried here too. Those, like Mama Round, who moved into this area early enough, remember the tranquility of the area code. It is here, far away from the busy Nairobi Central Business District, that many wanted to raise their families and grow old. When I first came, there was fresh air. I mean, we moved from the city. We used to live in Nairobi, Saudi B. All the dirt and the dust and the smoke from industrial area. So the first thing that attracted me here was the fresh air. I mean, you, you saw the bee, you'd wake up with a um, congested nose, congested chest, so that was good. I must say it is not too bad even now, although before the tarmac was done, the dust was, hmm, because it was maram, yeah. So it is the fresh air, it is, it's a unique place. I think the people are friendly, we have come and formed a new community and we work well. I think I made very good friends since I came here. But now, fresh air be damned. Real estate developers are cashing in big time at this area where land and property prices are at an all-time high. The Haas Consult Index estimates that the average asking price for the sale of a home here is about 6.9 million shillings. And if you think buying a house here is a tall order, try buying land which could cost you at least 20.4 million shillings per acre. Despite that, a majority of the residents here are individual land and home owners, with rental prices averaging about 35,000 Kenya shillings for a three-bedroomed house. The 25-square-kilometer parcel of land in which Siokimau Estate rests has indeed grown over time and the population explosion witnessed here has come with its fair share of challenges. On the second part of this particular segment, we look much deeper into the issues affecting the residents of Siokimau Estate. <laughs>